Hey, this is a screencast on how to sync tracks that were recorded separately. Um, here, I'm going to play you something that is a an organic recording, just kind of made live in the room. And you'll hear what that sounds like. It's a little percussion part. And uh, yeah, I just played this live in the room. I had a certain song in my head. Uh, oye como va. Mi ritmo, and I'm just thinking the song in my head while I played this out. Not a decent rhythm. I'm tapping my foot, you know, but but it's it's organic, uh, that kind of track. And the other track is metronomic. It's an organ part that I also was uh, just kind of had that song in my head. A bit of harsh. All right, let's turn that down. And I did record this along to a metronome because that's just easier for me to keep time on a piano with that. So these tracks, uh, if we play them together, mm -hmm. won't sound too good because we can make slippy slide adjustments and hope to get it right, but they were recorded separately. So I, I might have been a couple beats per minute faster or slower on this one. Um, so I'm going to show you how to fix that uh, by basically telling live how this uh, audio file is laid out. So uh, I'll also explain this difference between slave and master mode um, so that you understand that you don't have to make all your tracks feel metronomic in order to, 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 to use this technique. So what we're going to do is focus on the first track and uh, begin this process by turning on warp mode which makes a guess as to how the track is laid out. But we're not going to actually honor the guess. We're going to just listen and look and basically create the experience that we want to have. So uh, what's going to be really helpful for this is, first of all, you know, zooming in so that we can see and placing this uh, very accurately, and then also turning on the follow mode so we can you know, look as this plays. So let's play and see how close Live's guess got Turn the metronome on so we can hear Live's thinking and play. Ooh, I think Live is going a bit fast. Bump, ba dump, uh, bump. Okay, so that's the downbeat that we want to line up. Uh, so we saw it drifting earlier, but we can just pick this and slide that over. And I suspect the parts in between will line up. Let's listen. Yeah, see, it's, it's a lot better. Um, I'm not going to get too picky right now. Uh, sometimes you can, you know, end up spending a lot of time on this, and I, I, I like to get close before I get uh, perfectionisty. So let's keep going, and we'll kind of tag this as we go along. Bump, 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 nine. All right, let's turn that off. We can actually do this while the audio is playing. Three, four. All right, so that's the downbeat. Let's zoom in so we can pick up that downbeat. It's the fourth beat. And that's all. So we've mapped this out. The entire uh, thing here plays in sync. And to show you that, Let's just cozy the MIDI right up to it and take off solo mode. And let's see if we got lucky. Uh, oye como va. Mi ritmo bueno vamos a. <laughs> All right, so we got it. Uh, now, this is currently in the mode called slave. Uh, so what the effect of doing this is, uh, I was reasonably in time, so you don't hear a whole lot of difference, but by putting these points uh, into place um, and leaving this in slave mode, we've basically said the grid is king, and uh, we want you to compress and stretch this audio to line up to the grid. Well, the other way to do that is to turn that on its head and say, this recording is king. Now remember, this recording was made without listening to a metronome, right? So I could have slowed down or sped up or anything. All I did with these markers was tell live, you know, where I where I ended up hitting, you know, the thirteenth count, the sixteenth count. 
So the slave relationship uh, keeps this at its own tempo, and it inserts slowdowns uh, and speed ups into the entire grid system. So that is an interesting creative option that can let you take the feel of a performance with all of its slowdowns and stretches, stretch ups, and apply it to the MIDI. So it's a pretty, pretty good option. If you don't want to force somebody to record to a metronome, you don't have to. You can just capture them, uh, tell live where things are, and uh, uh, drag things out. Now, the strength of MIDI, on the other hand, you know, it isn't the uh, magic of a live performance, but something like this, where I recorded fewer sections in the MIDI than up here, can be really easily remedied with simply a drag drop, copy paste type of thing, and uh, the entire song. You know, you can arrange a song on the fly like this, you know, which is pretty nice. You can set up little markers that say, you know, this is the uh, blah, blah, blah section. Uh, this is the, you know, the intro of the song, and this is, the, you know, the verse one. So, yeah, so it's, it's a good to marry those two techniques together. That's Once you've got the organic and the metronomic styles of recording down and you can combine them, there's really nothing that can stop you. So, uh, in summary, uh, that's the technique. I like it a lot. Hope you enjoyed this.